the statement from Coach and open up the questions. Coach, when are you ready? Uh, this one will be much lighter than the last one. Uh, just really grateful for everybody that showed up. If you missed my message after the game, one thing I said, and I, I really need to make clear, y'all, uh, a lot of people know my story, but, you know, I'm an immigrant. I migrated from the Bahamas. Recently just got my citizenship three years ago. While some of you's homes are in different places in America, Oxford is home for me. You know, I pay taxes here. I'm, I go to church here. I give back here. I'm in the community here. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm a citizen of this community. Um, and my platform is big, and it, it's powerful, and I understand that. If you know about my foundation, No Seals with Coach Yo Foundation, the focus is women's empowerment and youth empowerment. Um, when I spoke about our community, I, I meant our community, you know, because I'm a part of it. Every single day I'm at soccer practice, I'm in the mix. Um, and, and people in the community can tell you that. They know me, um, and they see me. And so I, I'm, I, it was a call to action because I know how special this place is, but I'm also the one that promotes this university as well. And I can't promote it without the help of everybody. And so when everyone's like, oh, win a national champion championship, well, help me help you, all right? Crowds like this on a consistent basis will continue to win just like that. And so this victory uh, means a lot to us. I was grateful for everybody that came out and supported. Um, just a lot of love after seeing the video from everybody, from the mayor, uh, Shoot, Tyler Jordan, Lee, uh, at Realtree, everyone was here. Just represent my pastor, Fish Robinson, everybody was here and showed up to support and wrapped our, their arms around our program, and I'm super proud for that. Questions for Coach? You jumped out on a 6 nothing run to start the second half, mm -hmm. and I don't think you guys ever trailed from that point forward. Yeah. What were what was the halftime adjustments? What did, what did you do? I just talked to them about, um, you know, not being afraid to do this, you know? And, and I had to explain to them, like, you look scared, but I know you're not afraid of Tennessee. You're just afraid to fail. See, young people are afraid to fail because when they do, it's all over social media. You know, Snuther tried to make a big play versus LSU. Next thing I know, it's all over social media as if she got crossed up. And so there's an anxiety that young people have. And so I really addressed that about not being afraid to fail because if it's not failing, it's trying. Not trying is failing. And uh, once I said that, they were ready to go. And I didn't really have to say much. They did most of the talking. Um, I could just feel like, you know, uh, oh, another thing too, David, like we're a defensive team. And then here we go again, 27 points in the first quarter. Like what? But then we held them 12. So our goal was, can we hold them to 12 every quarter after that? And we couldn't, but they couldn't stop us either. So it ended up working out. This is your first time beating Tennessee. It's only the, the third win for Ole Miss over Tennessee in the last 30 years. I guess just what does a, a win like this mean for, for you and for this program? Yeah. Uh, when the buzzer, buzzer sound, I got super emotional uh, just because, you know, now there are only two teams that I haven't beat. Um, and so and, – and, and a lot of people – here, let me let me say this. I have so much love for Pat Summit's legacy. You know, uh, Pat Summit was the first uh, female coach that I was able to witness. You know, my dad coached me, but he's a dude. You know, and so I had never seen a woman coach until I saw Pat Summit. And then after that, Vivian Stringer, and then Don Staley. The list goes on and on. But I love Pat Summit. And so, and, and, and Tennessee fans have always embraced me. You know, they've been just great. They're like really gracious fans anyway, because they just love the sport of basketball. Um, and so this means a lot because every time we play Tennessee, y'all, I swear I feel Pat spirit. And it's not like I played for, and I've only met her a couple times, but you know, this was someone that mentored me from afar. You know, so for me, it was deeper than just beating Tennessee. Like Tennessee, the rich history of Lady Vol basketball, you know, you know how many people tried to beat them? 
<laughs> so, you know, this really means a lot. And more importantly, this puts us in a good position uh, as far as our standings are concerned, which is most important. Chris, uh, had, had a strong game tonight. I mean, is that something you've been seeing building the practice or, yeah. or is it just a good matchup for her? Well, I told my husband, I said, Rich, Rich is going to have a good game. We call her Rich. Uh, yesterday I had a one-on-one -on -one with her right before practice. I just talked to her about being the future face of this program. You know, obviously, you know, Maddie is that right now for us. And, and Queen and those came in and, and has assisted with building the legacy of Ole Miss women's basketball in this new era. But they're getting ready to graduate. They may not come back next year. Um, it's, then it's Rich, you know, it's her crew and it's those freshmen. And so I said, you, you just let me coach you. Uh, because you're super talented. And for the last three games, I've just been telling her, like, you could score more than six points. Like, you're way better than six points. Like, Rich is really a baller. But she's a sophomore. She's a baby and a freshman in our program. And so hopefully this continues to take her where it needs to be. Really proud of her. Can you talk a little bit about the continued development of Marquisha Davis? Hmm. I mean, she's turned into one of the premier players in the league. Kui, Kui is a bucket, you know, and I remember when she went into the portal, I saw her film, and I was like, I was unsure because she didn't have a motor, and I sent it to one of my former assistant coaches, and he said, if you don't go get that girl, you're crazy, and it was the best decision, one of the best decisions I've made since being here, and uh, luckily, she had a chance to sit out. But Kui is a unique character. She's a silent assassin, doesn't say much, but she's super intelligent. She's just not quick to say a bunch of words. You know, sometimes I wish I could take that from her, you know, like just take a sec. And so, but if you give her a second, what she'll say will be profound. It'll be intelligent because she is that. And a lot of people, um, you know, said that she wouldn't be able to cut it from an academic standpoint. And, her work ethic standpoint, uh, Kui is a 3.0 student, and and she's going to have a bright future. And uh, Carolyn Pack told her yesterday, she didn't even know Kui was around. She said, you know, that girl may get in the training camp. And I looked at Kui. I said, Kui, did you hear that? We're getting paid. Uh, and so she looked at me, and I always say we because I tell them they got to give money back when they go, you know. Uh, but she is deserving of it. You know, a week ago, no, four days ago was the anniversary of her dad passing away. He was a big supporter of her, and her mom has just entrusted me with her and really, really proud of, of Marquisha and the way she's deciding to finish out her last chapter. You've seen this team the last two weeks since that Starful game mm -hmm. kind of just respond, not even game to game, but day to day, and kind of kept things on, on the tracks. So. Well, don't forget, we had the bye week, so that was huge for us, you know. And Tennessee came out red hot, didn't they? That's what a bye week does, baby, fresh legs, you know. Uh, and so, we, I mean, our team has, we've been working. That was a huge reset for us. And then I just talked to them about, here's the thing, um, there's a winning side and there's a losing side. And, it is, and I'm not talking about results. I'm talking about mindset, work ethic, mentality. And I said, every day you come in, you get to choose that. It's not my side. It's not Maddie's side. There's a winning side and a losing side. Choose the winning side more often than the losing side, and the results will happen. And I told y'all, we're not playing our best basketball yet. So I just want y'all to know that the best is yet to come. It's coming. When you say that, I mean, I, I, I understand what you mean, but it's hard for a team to go, you know, we got a lot to play before mid-February and she thinks we're not going to be good. How does the team kind of buy in to, to what yeah. you're trying to convey there? They're super inspired by that. You know, like, you remember the first couple games, we couldn't score to save our life. We, our defense, we had to, that's what it was. Um, and then all of a sudden now, like, we've been scoring like a bunch of points. Uh, Toddy missed. A uh, hundred free throws. If she didn't, we'd had seventy-five points. You know, last game. Uh, so our team is just really buying in um, and believing in what this program is about. And so, um, when I say our best basketball, I still don't like 
the 27 points in a quarter. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that keeps me up at night. So our best basketball will be when, you know, we're continuing to score in the, in the, way, in the fashion that we are, but defensively uh, you just feel like you cannot score against us, and we have to work on that. You mentioned Tati. Um, she didn't miss any free throws tonight. <laughs> she, uh, she made yeah. a big layup at the end. Just what does that say about her ability to bounce back? Tati's a winner. You know, Tati is a winner. And, you know, and when Tati decided to leave a, a, a program like North Carolina to come to Ole Miss, she came to do one thing, and that's win. And she's been consistent with that. When Tati missed those free throws, you know, after the game, we're usually here for about two hours uh, just talking about stuff. And I walked out, and she was just finishing up shooting free throws. And I told y'all, she's the hardest worker on our team. And before the game, I said, Tati, that was a one-off. Let it go. You know, you won't shoot like that today. And uh, all the work is paying off, 12.7 assists, three rebounds, 100% from the free throw line. Proud of her. You're, you've got... Uh, Jasmine Powell said that she felt like they were playing scared. Um, and it felt like that should really happen second quarter on. Your team was the aggressor. Just what did it um, look like from your perspective, and how big is that for your team to be able to flip that switch and put the script of that game? Yeah, Cora, right? I love your stuff. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't know. Like, that's, you know, that's their – I'm not in their minds. Hell, I thought we were playing scared at first, you know? So maybe both teams were playing scared. I, I, I felt like they played hard, you know? They, they're a tough out. They're big and strong and physical. And they got, they got a winning uh, pedigree about them, you know? So you don't just walk. You, you got to beat them. I just think we beat them, you know? I don't think they did not want to win. Uh, Rakia is a future pro, you know, in the line. I mean, I love her and her family. And I just told her, like, I'm super proud of you. I thought they tried to win. I just thought we tried to win too. And when it came down to making big plays, we did that. And including today, three instances of, of your team since you've been here <laughs> giving up 70 points and winning. Um, two of them in the last week. You see these gray hairs? <laughs> what, I guess what's the value? That I, I know you love to play great defense every time, but, yeah. but what's the value of being able to win it in multiple ways like, yeah. like you have? Yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, our it's the work we put in in the off season transfer portal. We knew we needed to get offense up in here. And let me tell you all something. Everybody better be glad K.K. Deans ain't playing. All right? Because – she is a bucket too, but she'll be back next year. But Rich, uh, Carissa, is a is a baller. You know, Kennedy Todd Williams is a baller. We knew we had offensive deficiencies, right? And and evidently we still struggling from the three. But um, we we thought it was important to just continue to get really great character kids that fit our defensive system that can continue to have just a little bit better offensive production to go with what we had. And that is our formula. You know, we don't care about what they're ranked or nothing. Carissa wasn't ranked. No one talked about Carissa when she came. But she fits our system. And so that's just a compliment to my staff for us just evaluating each player that comes out the portal and fit and seeing what's best for us. And that is what we're going to continue to do. I want to ask you about uh, Maria. She's mm -hmm. going to be yeah. gone for a little bit. Yeah. Opportunity to play uh -huh. on the Paris Olympic team. How does that disrupt an organization? Mm -hmm. And just your thoughts on that. Well, Maria, um, before I, before she committed, I told her I'm going to support her uh, national team endeavors. And there are tons of – the reason why she's gone so long, because she used to play – um, U18 and so she has to try out you know but there are players in the SCC Camila Cardoza she'll leave hopefully on during our game to go uh, <laughs> Don <laughs> uh, to go play for Brazil there's a young lady at UCLA they're, they're, they're ladies all over the country this, they don't get this chance and so I, I told her family Maria go and our team supported it and hopefully, 
you know, she goes and gets a, a, a swagger because when she first came over here, I was like, this this little mom, little mama is getting ready to be a problem. And then she, it's an adjustment playing in America. So hopefully she goes there, gets that confidence. Hopefully she looks great um, and makes the team, and then we'll just welcome her when she gets back. Coach, what does a win like this, not just against Tennessee, but in the fashion that y'all did, a one-point game with a minute and a half to go, and y'all are able to pull it out yeah. against a team like Tennessee, what's a win like this do for kind of the belief and the confidence of this group, and especially since now I believe tied for second in the SEC? Like, what's this do for the group? I mean, it's great for us. It's, it's a win for the program. You know, Chancellor Boyce came and spoke to us about um, a month ago, and his message to the team was like, when he would see us play last year, he never knew if we would win or lose, but he always knew we would be the hardest working team on the floor. And that has really been our, our motto since then. You know, and uh, we really believe in being the hardest working team out on the floor. I think a win like this hopefully tells recruits that they can come and do special things here. You know, that's what I love about where college basketball is now. Back in the day, you know, it was Tennessee, it was UConn, and now it's LSU, it's, it's South Carolina, and guess who else it is? It's Ole Miss. And so we want players to come here too. And so hopefully uh, they continue to see that and feel inspired by how we play and want to be a part. There have been other teams that, that felt like they could beat Tennessee off the dribble. Um, felt like tonight your players really could get to the rim, mm -hmm. finish, or even just <clears throat> pull up for a jumper. Did, going to this matchup, did you feel like that was an area you could exploit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, here's the thing. Every team has strength and weaknesses, right? Their their strength, their strength was is is their physicality. Uh, you know, they're they're super tough and they're big. Our strength is we're quick. And we're also physical and we're athletic. And so I thought the team that showed, like, like that, that did whatever it took from the team that forced their, imposed their will, the best would win. And that's why I thought we got the edge. Because for us, we felt like we could take them off the dribble. Well, but I also challenged my team to win on the glass. And that ain't easy to do versus that size. Did y'all see them 6'6"? Six, six? I mean, they're big. And so 38 to 30, that's toughness. So I'm really proud of us for that. Coach, Jules Spear led the way for Tennessee. How much she had on? 30 points. What? Drew, drew six fouls. What did you see from your point of view about her play? I mean, Jules is a baller. <laughs> wow. We got to fix this. This is the second time someone had 30 on us. You get what I'm saying? Uh this is a problem. Uh, I thought she got to her spots. I thought we, we, I thought we got a little loose um, and let her get a couple open looks. And, and uh, eight threes, like y'all know, we hold teams to three, three threes. So that was uncharacteristic of us, and that allowed her um, to go ahead and do well. But, you know, she just left from Wake. Toddy came from North Carolina. So it was like an ACC battle going on. And uh, I gl I'm glad we got the better of it. Any other questions for Coach? Great. Thanks, Thank you all. Everyone.